What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another video. Must start and avoid running backs for week one. I'm sure you guys are as excited as I am for the start of the season, so we're going to start off my first in-season video with the running back position. I want to start off though by apologizing for yesterday's video. The quality was not good and it was not up to the standards of our channel. I will do everything in my power going forward to make sure that it does not happen again. All right, first thing I want to talk about is the obvious starts. I don't want to just go over the more difficult decisions because then it might look to some people like I'm saying you should maybe start some of those guys over the elite players. That's not what I'm saying. Everyone I'm going to go over in a second here is a must start in all formats and then we'll go over the tougher decisions after. So McCaffrey, Barkley, Kamara, DJ, Zeke, assuming that Zeke signs the contract, I'm recording this right now before anything is official, but obviously this is going to be an easy one to track, right? I mean, if he gets the deal done before they start, before the game starts, then you're starting him in your lineup in all leagues. If they don't get the contract done, you're starting Pollard. Easy as that. But the rest of the guys and him, you're starting in any format in any matchup it doesn't matter obviously starting them uh chubb james connor and bell you're definitely starting these guys as well i would lower expectations they all face difficult run defenses this week and bell in particular uh, has both a tough matchup and he's likely to see a little bit less volume than people are expecting to start this season because again he missed all of last season plus they love ty montgomery and they want to give him a few touches in the offense uh, you're starting Gurley, even with the concerns over the knee. He's still Todd Gurley. Dalvin Cook and Chris Carson are also both must-starts. Uh, both of them are home favorites and just dream matchups. Dalvin Cook getting to play the Falcons. They give up a ton of receiving yards to running backs. And Carson getting the Bengals, who are a very, very easy matchup. Uh, Four Nets a must-start. Surprisingly high implied total for the Jaguars. And Vegas actually expects this game to be close i mean they don't expect the jaguars to win but it's a lot closer than i thought it would be and given that they've talked a lot about him being more involved in the passing game he's got a lot of upsides you're definitely starting him joe mixon is a must start you know he's going to see a massive opportunity share in this offense and while seattle's defense is improved it's not elite so it's a difficult matchup but it's not one we're avoiding for a joe mixon owner and then finally carry and johnson this game is a potential shootout depending on how well the cardinals can move the ball in offense but regardless this is a beautiful matchup for carry and johnson the cardinals are going to be a team we are targeting running backs against this season given how fast they're going to play and how terrible their defense is so you're starting carry on in all leagues so Everyone I just talked about, I want to reiterate, you're starting them in all formats. The rest of the players we're going to talk about are where a little bit more decision making needs to be made. I, of course, can't go over every single player. So if you want to see my full weekly rankings, you can do so at our website, thefantasyfootballadvice.com. All right, player number one is Mark Ingram. You are starting Mark Ingram this week. Honestly, I don't think I want to call him a running back one because he's not super involved in the passing game, but he's a high-end running back two in this matchup. The Dolphins have no real chance of winning this game unless just absolutely crazy variance swings in their favor. So the Ravens are going to have the ball a ton and they're going to have the ball in really good field position. So they're going to be able to install the exact game plan they want because the Dolphins can't stop anyone on the ground and they want to be the most run-heavy team in the league. They're probably not going to throw the ball that many times, although, you know, they're going to throw the ball more than they did last season under Lamar. Still going to run a ton. And Mark Ingram is going to open the season as the clear lead back. So like I said, not going to have a huge involvement in the passing game, and that's a problem in weeks where we expect the game to be closer or we expect the Ravens to lose. But that's not the case this week. They're going to crush the Dolphins. He's going to have plenty of scoring opportunities. Honestly, he's probably one of the most likely running backs of the week to score a touchdown. He should be around 100 total yards. So start him. I can promise you one thing though. In week three, he is going to be featured in the sell high video. I can promise it's going to happen. He's going to smash this week. Then again, next week when they take on the Cardinals, people are going to think that he's just incredible. This is just an awesome offense. But really, they're just playing like the two worst defenses and just phenomenal matchups for running backs. So he's going to be in that video, but you're starting him this week 
and you're starting him next week. Next, we have Drake and Balage. Under no circumstance may you start one of these two running backs. Uh, this is the other side of this game that we just talked about. Dolphins are going to get crushed. I'd be very surprised if they score more than one touchdown in this game. Maybe they score one on like a fluke play or maybe even special teams or something like that. But I don't see them scoring more than one touchdown. And this offensive line is a complete joke. And the Ravens defense is going to tear them apart. So I don't want the running game behind that line. You might say, okay, well, we're obviously not looking at Balazs for that. Maybe we look at Drake for like some receiving work. It's just not worth it. The Ravens are such a good defense. And I guarantee you have better options. So hard pass for me. Do not start these two. David Montgomery. Now, I own Montgomery in one of my three leagues. And I will be starting him in that league. It's not a great matchup or anything. And it would really be nice if you have better options to see the split. This is the Thursday night game. So everyone's going to want to play players in that game to finally get some action. But under an ideal situation, we can see the split between Montgomery, Davis, and Cohen before needing to start them. Because we're guessing right now. And I feel good about where we've guessed them to go, but I can't know for sure. So if I'm in a league where I went two running backs really early and I feel good about a wide receiver in the flex, I'm okay benching Montgomery this week. Again, it's not a terrible matchup, but I want to see how they split these touches in the backfield. He's still a home favorite and he's at worst going to get a decent workload and I am starting him. But if you have three better options, then I'm okay benching him. Aaron Jones, next. We might as well just go to the other side of this game. The Bears are one of those defenses you just avoid in fantasy if you can. There are going to be plenty of weeks where we can play Jones, but this doesn't feel like one of them. He's a road underdog against a top five run defense, and while he should get some work in the passing game, the Bears were still above average in how many receiving yards they gave up to running backs. And above average meaning good, not giving up an above average amount. Above average in not giving up that many receiving yards. And there's really no reason to expect them to get any worse this season. He's also not overly likely to score a touchdown since they have a low team total and the matchup so difficult. So if you have a choice, you've got just someone you can put in there that you feel better about, I would do that. I know that he was probably your third round pick and that you might have to start him, but if you at all have anyone else that you can put in that spot, I would because I don't feel comfortable starting Aaron Jones this week. Austin Eckler, I do feel comfortable starting. So I guess if you went Eckler in what, that'd be like the fifth or sixth round, Start him over Jones, because barring a very unforeseen return of Melvin Gordon, he's going to be the guy. In the three games that Gordon missed, and both he and Jackson played in last season, Eckler had 17, 18, and 17 touches. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that he's going to have roughly 17 touches under a normal game setting, right? Like there might be a game where they just blow the team out and maybe just he doesn't get that much volume or they have a very low volume game where the other team's hogging the ball, then it's going to vary from that point. But I think under an average game, that's where they want him to be. In those games, he had seven, eight, and five targets, which makes me believe he's going to be somewhere in the like 11 to 12 carry and seven to eight target range. That's where I see Austin Eckler in week one, especially because of the matchup. He's a home favorite running back, playing a solid defense, but one that does give up a ton of receptions to running backs. The Colts do not lose on defense to deep balls. They just don't. They give up low A dot targets. That's a good thing for the Chargers offense because they operate a lot on low A dot targets. So you're going to see Keenan Allen, you're going to see Hunter Henry, you're going to see Justin Jackson and Austin Eckler with a ton of dink and dumps. Plus, given their implied total, he's got a decent chance to score. So he's got a good chance to score, should be a good game script, and he has a nice floor given that he is going to be very involved in the receiving game. So I think he's a very solid running back too and someone that I would start. Next on the list is Miles Sanders, and this one is actually a tougher call than I think most people think. While I expect Sanders to be the lead back fairly early in the season, He's going to be in a timeshare to start the year. And this is such an easy win for the Eagles 
that they really just don't need to use Sanders. They might just keep giving Howard some carries to close out the game. I'm not starting Sanders in the league where I own him because I have Chubb and Montgomery and I just don't feel the need of the flex position given my wide receivers. So if you're in a similar situation, I'm okay benching Sanders. However, if you went RB0 and maybe Sanders is just a running back you need to start, then he is a viable flex play in this matchup. He's a two-score home favorite in a game that's pretty likely to get out of hand quickly. The Eagles are going to have great field position all game, and there are going to be plenty of different drives where he has a scoring chance. So I do consider Sanders a start if you need to in the flex, but if you don't need to, wait a week, because I don't think he's going to see a massive amount of volume in week one. Tariq Cohen is next, and honestly, I wouldn't be shocked at all if Cohen scores on some sort of misdirection play this week. The Bears are a smart team. They're pretty creative in their play calling. It wouldn't surprise me at all if there's some sort of trick play for Cohen to score a touchdown. But if he doesn't score a touchdown, then he's just not going to see enough volume to be worth starting this week. I don't expect this to be a high volume game. And remember, this is the game we talked about with Aaron Jones and with Dave Montgomery with the Packers versus the Bears. So with not a ton of plays, not a ton of points being expected, those really aren't the games that I'm targeting Tariq Cohen. I want Tariq Cohen in games that I'm expecting a shootout. I'm expecting them to maybe be playing from behind, but to also score a ton of touchdowns. That's when I want Cohen, not in a game like this. He's probably going to see around three to four carries, maybe five to six, maybe seven targets, which means that unless he scores a touchdown, you're probably going to be disappointed even if you put him in the flex. I'm sure you have better options though. It's not like Cohen was going in the early rounds. So just leave him on your bench this week. Next we have Tevin Coleman and Matt Breda. And I think both of these guys are solid flex plays because of the matchup. I do believe this is a game that could shoot out given that both of these defenses are, we'll say, subpar, which means that both of these guys are viable in the flex. Tampa Bay was quite possibly the worst defense last season. There was a few that were also pretty terrible, but they just couldn't force turnovers. They couldn't rush the passer. And honestly, they couldn't stop you on the ground or through the air. So it didn't matter what you were good at, just pick one and you could beat them. So while they should be better this season, that's not saying a whole lot. They're still gonna be bad. Both Coleman and Breda should be used fairly evenly to start the season and we should see them both see work in the receiving game. The game currently has a 49 and a half point total, which isn't anything crazy, but it's on the higher end. And I do think that this game can shoot out. I think that we could end up seeing this game at 60, 65 points if both teams are scoring touchdowns. So both of these guys are viable in the flex, not must starts in the flex, but definitely viable if you don't like your other options. They're a little bit better in half and full PPR league, so if you are one of the people who plays in standard, maybe shy away from them, but I think that makes up the vast minority of our viewers. So half in PPR, I think they're viable flex plays. Devin Singletary, last guy we'll talk about. Um, the thing with him is you just, you very likely don't need to start him, right? I mean, given where you drafted him, I'd be shocked if he was your running back too. So I definitely give it at least one week. Gore is still there and Gore is going to get some early down work. And it's possible that Yeldon takes a few targets away in the passing game. Although I'd be a little surprised if they actually used Yeldon all that much. So I do expect Singletary to get the largest workload of any running back in the backfield but they don't have that high of a total. The Jets are a tough run defense. And like I said, you probably have better options. So it's definitely worth waiting a week and just seeing how they split the opportunity. Because once we see that, then we can further analyze the matchup and say, okay, maybe he is viable in the flex spot in week two. But week one, let's be honest, you just don't have to go there. So those are some must start and avoid running backs for week one. I can't talk about every player like I said, so you can check out my full rankings at our website, thefantasyfootballadvice.com. But that's the end of this one. I hope you all did enjoy. If you did, how about hitting that like button? If you're new here, how about subscribing to the channel? But thanks for watching.